So this video is going to be a little bit more off the cuff. I figured I'd just kind of chat a bit more about this rather than make a big long scripty boy. I don't script too much anyway because my brain don't do that too good. Before I even get into the topic of today's video though, I just want to say hello to what is now I think 3,000 of you new subscribers. I had like like a thousand last week and I had like 300 the week before that, so this is pretty wild. So hey, I hope you hit the notification bell so you saw this as soon as it went up. Hello, one of the 3,000 people. I'm glad you're enjoying the content. And if you haven't subscribed yet, join. Join us. We're 3,000 strong. Hit that button. Slap it. Right now. Look me in the eye. Hit it. Navigate there while maintaining eye contact. Nice. Now that that business is out of the way, has My Hero Academia fell off? Did it fall off? Has it fallen off? Did it do a tumble? Did it, much like Humpty Dumpty, fall off the wall? Well, like anything else, it's kind of subjective. Personally, I think fell off is a bit much. Did it fall off? Eh, it dipped. It certainly dipped. I mean, if we go back and look at it at the very, very beginning, well, the thing is, it came along at just the right time. It tiptoed its way in right around the time we were really feeling the loss of the big three. I know One Piece is still going, and we've got Boruto, and Bleach has come back from the dead, and I'm so happy Thousand Year Blood War is amazing. But it was a really, really fun, lighthearted, awesome shonen. I mean, it, whatever about the manga, and by the way, I will be spoiling everything about the story up to where it is right now, as of March 8th. So I'm definitely gonna spoil some things between now and there in terms of the manga. So if you're not up to date or you're an anime only, stop watching now. Or don't. I fucking care. But the story, while maybe not the most unique, was still quirky. It's the only, it's the only time I'm gonna make that joke. I just had to get it off my chest. I had to get it done. I'm sorry. I'm not sorry. I am sorry. It had a protagonist who was fun, cute, lighthearted. The visuals, the art style. If you're watching the anime, the music. It's so good. This is an anime that's defining this generation of anime, especially this generation of shonen. The one handy thing it does better than most shonen is giving us an idea of how the power works in the show, as in it's not just, oh, this person is, they have a power level of 9,022, and this one has a power level of 9,046. Oh, and, but this one, but now he did a push-up and he's four, four billion. Now ragging on Dragon Ball, I love, <laughs> ragging on Dragon Ball. I love Dragon Ball. But my point being the different quirks in the story do a really good job of balancing out the power and also explaining things or kind of letting you shrug off when the power balance doesn't feel right. And at times things do feel slightly skewed, but what it does better than anything else is hype. Like, absolute hype. I still, to this day, whenever I have something to do that's like, I'm anxious or nervous, I will re-watch the scene where Deku and Kachan are saved by All Might, like right at the beginning of the story. That or All Might versus Nomu. And you know when a series has gotten so far in, like we are we are so deep in. At this point, I think Lady Nagant is the most recent like tease for the next um, next part of the anime. We are so far in, and I still go back to watch one of the first big fights in the show because it is amazing. If I could take You Say Run, liquefy it, and put it into my vi I would not need this coffee ever again. One dose of liquid you say run, I will never sleep again. And we see so many great moments of growth for the different characters. Sure, we get like talk no jutsu, but we also get it in kind of better ways than Naruto ever did it. Not only is it one of the biggest titles in anime and manga right now, but I think depending on how it finishes off, it could be one of the best shonen stories ever. But I'm rambling. Why do people say it fell off? Well, while that mostly depends on the person, different people fell off at different points. Some people as early as the forest training arc. There are different characters, different things, different story beats that made people jump off the train. But no one really said it fell off, for me at least, until we got to the joint training arc. And yeah, it dipped. It didn't fall off, but it... It fucking tripped over the edge for me there, honestly. It was... <laughs> That one was a bit of a slug. It didn't fall off, but it was hanging onto the ledge with two fingers. It wasn't doing great. It had some interesting moments in there with Deku figuring out some new things about his powers and figuring out new powers on the fly. It was also a way to flesh out some characters that we hadn't really seen very much of and needed a little bit of work so we could understand their quirks for some things to come. But everything leading up to that point there was a general consensus that it was pretty solid. If you were watching the anime, sure, some of the fights were a little tamped down. They didn't feel as awesome. 
the animation had kind of dipped a little bit. And that was just down to Studio Bones having some production issues. Uh, understandable, considering everything that happened in the last two or three years. But still, another reason why someone might have fallen off the train if they were just anime only. But the big issue, I think, personally, in my opinion, is right around when that joint training arc wrapped up was where we got really into the My Villain Academia part of the story. That whole arc was based around fleshing out Shigaraki and his little band of villains. The whole point of that was to flesh out what they were, what their values were, and why they mattered as villains in the story. But the problem was, we went from a very, very lackluster arc surrounding our heroes, the people we've been around and are super heavily invested in. We went from an arc where the focus on them was kind of shitty and pretty boring for the most part, to an arc that really didn't involve them at all, and asked us to reinvest ourselves in characters that, while we had some investment in them, we didn't have by the time we got to the meta-liberation arc. It was like 200 some chapters of story behind them. Not in the same way we did with our heroes, not with the main characters. So we had to reinvest ourselves and really, really get dug into a whole different arc. While it did involve the main story, didn't involve it in the same way. It was from an entirely shifted perspective. And I'll be honest, at the beginning of that arc, I wasn't mega excited about it. It really felt like a big tangential jump off to the side. It felt like Horikoshi was trying to flesh out another storyline at a really inopportune time, but it did pick itself up by the end. There were some really interesting developments with the villain's quirks, and it was really cool to see them pit their own beliefs and their own values and wants against the Liberation Army. And I understand the whole point was to provide the other side of the coin to what we see with our heroes, that our heroes are driven by their own values, that they're driven by their need to protect people, by their want to create a better world. And so is Shigaraki and his group of villains. Their motivations are just completely different. They don't necessarily want to build a better world. They want a better world. And for them, that means destroying the world that's present now completely. But from there, once Shigaraki and the crew take over the paranormal liberation front, the story really picks up. We get the Endeavor Agency arc, and then we get the paranormal liberation war arc. And that is where things rocket up. Everything falls apart. All for one, out of prison, possessing Shigaraki, forming him into his own vessel, and it brings us right into the final saga arc. And that's where we are right now. We see Deku in his dark hero arc. We see him struggling to do everything himself to try and be the hero that All Might was, pushing himself to a degree that he's unrecognizable at points. He is so far away from where he started. He has the same values, but all he cares about now is just going and going. And that's what we see of him. He is just barreling through situation to situation. We see him practically one shot muscular, and that's it. Just just awesome for me. I, I loved the muscular fight in the forest training arc and seeing him wipe the floor with muscular now when he almost fucking died fighting him before. Oh, chef's kiss. Beautiful. And after he tries to tackle it all on his own, he realizes that he can't. He needs to step off. He needs to take the foot off the gas. He doesn't realize it on his own. Class 1A gets involved and gives him a little bit of a talking to. But at this point, like I said, the stakes have never been higher. All for One is broken out. Prisons across Japan have been busted open. Villains are roaming the country, just taking, pillaging, destroying. The place is in ruins. And the rest of the world just kind of doesn't want to fuck with All for One. The rest of the world is kind of happy to just step back, at least until a certain point when one of my favorite heroes pops up. Stars of Stripes, man. She was cool as fuck. We get to see Kachan apologize to Deku. We get to see him say sorry for being admittedly a horrible little bastard. We get so much emotional catharsis on the lead up to this final battle. And it has done such a good job in setting the stage for where we're at now, for this final fight against All For One. I can see the purpose of the joint training arc and the My Villain Academia arc a lot better than I could before. I still got it. As I was reading it, I knew kind of why it had to be part of the story, but seeing it now, I think it definitely gave a lot more breathing room for us to pace things out a little bit better. Sure, there could have been more interesting stories told at the time, but we got what we got there. And while, again, like I said, that was where it sort of fell off for me, right now they have turned this shit up to 11. I am holding on for the 
oh, for my life, I am on the edge of my seat and I am ready to be dragged kicking and screaming into whatever the final chapters of this story have for me. Lamillion, my boy, if you couldn't tell, my boy. Lamillion is back in the mix and wrecking house. And Deku, with all the powers of the previous users of One For All, are you kidding me? Like, I know by now it's not like fucking a state secret that that happens, but what's astounding to me is, again, the fact that they they set this up, Horikoshi set this up so early on that Deku understood implicitly how different powers worked and how to respond and use them. It, oh, I fucking love this shonen. And again, at the end of the day, it's a shonen. It is gonna be balls to the wall, mad action. It's not gonna be some form of high art. It's a type of art all to itself. I get goosebumps every time I watch the All Might versus All For One fight. Every time, without fail. There's just, it's incredible. This shonen has had me cheering in real life, like actually sitting up in my seat watching it, cheering, crying, and yelling. And I haven't done that for any other... The only thing that's come close to this for me before has been Gurren Lagan. And... Gurren Lagan. I don't know why I said it weird that time. And aside from all of that, aside from everything else, a story about being able to pick yourself up and push through no matter what, finding those reserves of strength within yourself and pushing through, giving 100% and pushing beyond that, 100% plus ultra... I'll never not be delighted to see that kind of story, to feel that kind of vibe. So no, it hasn't fallen off. If you fell off, that's okay. I get it. Like I said, it's not perfect. Definitely not perfect. It's had its ups and downs, but if you did fall off, my advice, pick yourself up and get back on. Because I'm not quite sure where this train's are going. But I know whatever station we pull into at the end is going to be fantastic. It's going to define a whole generation of anime watchers and manga readers and wonderful, wonderful weebs. It's already giving me the same vibes as Naruto in the early days, where you couldn't go to a convention without seeing an Akatsuki robe or headband or tattoo or something. I mean, that's still the case. That's just never going to go away. That's going to be there forever. But I don't know. I'm just rambling a little bit now. Like I said, this one's a bit more off the cuff. I just needed to talk about this because I get it. Again, I get it. You feel like it fell off. It didn't. You fell off. Get back on. And I'm definitely going to make a video about it once it all wraps up because, oh, I have notions. I have things to say. I have so many thoughts, but I just want to tie them all up in a little bow once it's all done and dusted so expect that in the future subscribe if you want to see that definitely let me know how you're feeling about it because like i said i don't feel like it fell off but let me know what you thought in the comments i'm really interested to see how people find like how people's subjective opinions factor into this because i know some people who were ride or die on this way back at the beginning who have jumped ship entirely and that's just wild to me but if you don't think it fell off hit the like button and let me know and if you do think it fell off hit the like button and let me know i like when you do that it makes me feel the good feel it makes me hap but yeah i'm gonna call it there before i carry on too much longer i could honestly wax lyrical about this for ever if you like what you saw all my links for all my other stuff are in the description I got my twitch on there i stream fridays and saturdays friday evenings saturday mornings gmt so you can head over there follow to get notifications for when i go live it's usually a bit of fun right now i'm doing a lot of final fantasy stuff and some days gone zombie stuff there's also my tiktok where i infrequently post stupid stuff and if you want to support the channel you can buy me a coffee on my coffee if i remember to make it um i suppose we'll know if you click the link, if I remember to when I'm done editing this video, it's pretty late and I'm a very tired boy. So like I said, I'm going to call it here. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.